Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra and this review lesson is on chapter 9, part 2, Limiting Reactants and Percent Yield. I'm lumping them together because they weren't quite long enough to be videos on their own and kind of fit pretty well together. But determining limiting reactant is actually pretty fun. I'll use the example we learned in class where you're making a pizza, right? You need pizza shells, sauce, cheese, and, ah uh, heck, let's say pepperoni. I'd say pineapple, but I think some of you would probably click off the video. And that will give you the pizza that you want. So in order to make this, the recipe looks sort of like this. One shell, say half a cup of sauce, two cups of cheese, because you're just going to use the whole package, and give or take 30 slices of pepperoni, depending on how many you eat and how many are in the package to begin with. But what you buy at the store is two shells, one cup of sauce, a normal two cup bag of cheese, and give or take 75 slices of pepperoni. So when you're looking at this, you think, oh, okay, so you have enough for two pizzas. But do you? As you can see here, there's only two cups of cheese you have available to make the pizza, which means you can only make one. This, in this metaphor, is your limiting reactant. Which means you can't make any more, and these other things are in excess. But, for purposes, let's just quickly rewind. And say this. It's two cups on a pizza, but you bought four cups at the store because you were planning on putting extra. That means that you can make two pizzas. But that's only 60 slices of pepperoni, so if you take that out, there are still 15 slices left unclaimed. This is called your excess reactant. This is what's left over that you don't need, or in this case, isn't used up in the reaction. That was a very, very, very convoluted way of saying something very, very simple. In a reaction, sometimes you don't have enough of one of your reactants to carry out the reaction to the fullest extent. That means that sometimes you're going to have reactants left over, which is why you have what's called in excess. But let's do a quick example from the textbook, where if the equation is you have two moles of cupric sulfide, three moles of oxygen, yielding two moles of, this would be copper two oxide, and two moles of sulfur dioxide. In this case, let's say you're given 100 grams of the cupric sulfide, and that's 56 grams of oxygen. So how do you determine which is the limiting reactant? Just because there's less grams of oxygen doesn't mean that that's necessarily the limiting reactant. What you need to do in this case is, sorry, I'm going to space it out a little bit more, is determine how much of one of the products you can form using however much of these you're given. That means you can figure out which one creates more of the product. Whichever one creates more is your excess reactant, whichever one creates less is your limiting reactant. So let's start with the 100 grams of cupric sulfide. I've already determined the molar mass, so I'm not going to do that calculation just to save some time. There are two moles of cupric sulfide and 95.61 grams per mole. Then you multiply it by your mole ratio. We're doing the copper 2 oxide, which will give you back 0 0.02092 moles of your copper 2 oxide. But let's do the 56 grams of O2, which if you have 3 moles of O2, that's 16.0 grams per mole, times the mole ratio for this one, which would be 3 moles of O2 for 2 moles of CO, CuO, which will give you back 0 0.2. 
two, eight, one, three moles of the cumulative oxide. Now, since this is significantly lower, that means the cupric sulfide is your limiting reactant. Then you can carry out the rest of the problem if you have to, to figure out how many moles of the substance you create or whatever else is required of you in the problem. Now let's talk about percent yield, which I'm sure a lot of you probably feel better about. So looking at percent yield, the percent yield equals actual yield over theoretical yield times 100%. It's pretty easy. It might remind you slightly of when we did um, percentage error towards the beginning or some of the other percents, but basically Actual yield is what the problem gives you, or if you do it in a lab, whatever you get back, versus the stoichiometric calculation. Now, the percent yield is always less than or equal to 100%. There is no way for it to be greater, or you've done something wrong. The actual yield, most of the time, is going to be lower than what it theoretically should be yield. Because there's always something wrong with the problem, even if it's not just human error, it's sometimes the problem doesn't completely carry out, the reaction doesn't finish, or it doesn't use up all of the reactants, even if there is a limiting reactant, doesn't use all of that either. And with that confusing explanation, this should conclude episode 22 of Chemistry in 15 minutes or less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on Chemistry Review. As always, I hope this was somehow helpful, and have a great day.